Islam. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord, who created you from a single person, and from him he created his wife, and from them both he created men and women. And fear Allah, through whom you demand your mutual rights, and do not cut the relations or the ties of kinship, and surely Allah is ever and all watcher over you. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah and fear Him and speak always the truth. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, who I love for their Islam, who I love for their Iman, who I love for their Tawheed, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you mercy and blessing and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you goodness for your efforts of coming for this blessed day for this Salat al-Jum'ah. My dear brothers, we have been, my sisters, we have been tricked. We have been lied to. We have been deceited. We have been bamboozled. We have been taken as fools. And we have been sold a very lousy product at a very high price. And we should all be very angry. There are no refunds, no exchanges, no returns for this product we have bought. And this product we have bought is the assumption that this is our home. We have bought the idea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this on this earth to remain for all eternity. And this is where we should build our lives, and this is where we should build our goodness, and this is where we should, and should, and should. We have all lived under the assumption that this is our home. That we belong here, we will remain here, and our children after us will remain here. We have forgotten our home. We have for forgotten where we were created, and we have forgotten where we will return. We have forgotten our purpose, and we have forgotten our journey. And this, my brothers, is not something a worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should easily forget. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب the Prophet Muhammad said in a correct narration, be in this world as if you are a stranger or a traveler. Subhanallah. Does someone who's traveling carry with him the burdens of his home? Carry with him all of his furnishings and all his best clothing and all of his money and all his wealth. No, the traveler takes only what he needs to get to his destination. Many Muslims, they live their lives not as travelers but as wanderers. And there's a difference between a traveler and a wanderer. A traveler, he has a destination. I'm going to come from here and I'm going to go there. I have a point A and a point B. But a wanderer does not have a point B. He only leaves from point A looking for something in his life. And this, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is not how a Muslim should be. We should constantly be looking for point B. We should be constantly looking at our destination and remembering it throughout our journey. Does the, some, does the person who is traveling break the ties of kinship with his family? No, because he knows when he's traveling, he will be reliant upon his family when he's traveling. Does the person who is traveling have make enemies along his way with bad manners? No. He's good to everybody because you know everybody can benefit him. My dear brothers and sisters, the reality is that we're here on this earth as travelers, as strangers. We are strangers here. This is not our home. This isn't where we should build our homes. This isn't where we should raise our children. This isn't where we should work. This isn't where we should spend time. And you might ask, yeah, brother, brother Ammar, what are you talking about? 
How do you spend time other than where we are currently? We as Muslims should be building our houses in the hereafter, in Jannah. We hear this several times. Perhaps in Ramadan, probably 15 times we've heard build your house in Jannah through giving donation to the masjid, right? But there are other ways to build your house in Jannah. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا زعيم ببيت في ربد الجنة لمن ترك المراء وإن كان محقا محقا وببيت في وسط الجنة لمن ترك الكذب وإن كان مازحا وببيت في أعلى الجنة لمن حسن حسن الخلق خلقه خلقه the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is saying, I guarantee a house in Jannah, in the outskirts of Jannah, for a man who avoids quarreling even when he's right. But we look at men, we look at ourselves, when it comes to a quarrel and we know we're right, what do we do? لا حقي. I'm going to put this person down and he's going to know the truth. When we're with our wives and we're speaking with our wives, Perhaps we are harsh with our wives and we don't say, let it go. And the Prophet Muhammad is saying, he has promised us a house in Jannah for that. The interesting thing about this part, first part of the hadith, if you are leaving arguing with people and leaving arguing with your family members in your own home, what is your home going to look like when you're no longer arguing with your family members? You built your home in this life and the hereafter. The second one, the Prophet Muhammad mentioned a house will be promised to, a house in the middle of Jannah will be promised to the person who avoids lying even when he's joking. But many Muslims, even when they're joking and trying to be funny, they have to tell a lie. They have to make up a story to make something funny or to get laughs from somebody. At the end of the day, this is a lie. And this is something we should leave for the sake of Allah. The last part, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ promises a house in the upper part of Jannah for a man who makes his character good. Now, the first two also make your character good, right? If you are giving up lying and you are giving up arguing, you have a good character. So, subhanAllah, it's as if the Prophet Muhammad is saying, you keep going at it and you'll have a house in Jannah in the higher parts of Jannah. The Prophet Muhammad قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى في يوم اثنت عشرة ركعة بني له بيت في الجنة. We heard this hadith before. Perhaps many of us, whoever prays twelve raka extra in a day, a house will be built for him in Jannah. Now praying the twelve sunnah rakat in the day is not very difficult. It just requires maybe fifteen minutes more of our day to do it, and we have built our house in Jannah. So now, why am I talking about building a house in Jannah, and I'm talking about we've been deceived. Many of us have left the Sunnah and the, uh, the commandments of the Prophet Muhammad for the deceit of this world, for the beautification of this world, and maybe not in the ways mentioned in this hadith, but perhaps we know of a brother or a sister or a family who had a house and they moved far away from the masjid, they moved far away from the masajid under the premise of, oh, I want to live in a safe area. We've heard this before, we've seen this before. I don't want to live around the masjid because it's a bad area. 
So what do they do? They move 20 minutes away from the masjid and their kids lose their attachment to the masjid. Their families lose their attachment to the masjid. He is no longer praying Aisha and Fajr in the masjid. He barely makes it to Jum'ah. He struggles going to work. But we all look at it like, yeah, it makes sense. If you want to have a safe family, you move away from the bad areas and the masjid is in a bad area. Now let me ask you, what would happen if this person said, for the sake of Allah, I will live as close to the masjid as I can. I'm not worried about the value of the property. I'm worried about the value of my property in Jannah. Do you think for a second that this person's family will see any hardship within their deen? Do you think this person will see his children growing up far away from the masjid? As long as he is enjoining what is good and forbidding what is evil, of course his family will be close to the masjid. Because that was what his intention. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us what we intended. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to submit to his religion. When we raise our children, and this is tied to our household, we should raise them in Jannah. How do we raise them in Jannah? We raise them on the path to Jannah so that when we pass away, they make dua for us after we're gone. They make dua for us after we're gone. I have met many people whose parents have passed away and I asked them, what do you do for your parents, for example? And they said, there's not a rak'ah or a sujood that goes by that I do not make dua for my mother or father. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine your child, after you're gone, making dua for you four times, seven times in one salah, eight times in one salah, putting them before yourself? We cannot raise our children far away from the masjid. If we made this effort to bring our families and our homes closer to the masjid, wallah, we'll see miracles. We'll see things happen. We cannot explain it. But, alas, we've been deceived, we've been lied to, and we bought our product, and now it's time for us all to rectify ourselves, insha'Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. How do we spend our time in Jannah? We spend our time in Jannah by doing those things which bring our journey closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we have been commanded to be like travelers on this earth. Ghuraba, we're supposed to be strangers. We stand out compared to the non-Muslim. We stand out. We talk weird. We walk weird. We go to the bathroom weird. We drive weird. We smile weird. To them, we're weird. So just that alone should push us to understand, I do not belong here. This is the, this is the land of the, the non-believers. The land of the believers is in Jannah with their Lord. So we may not be raised with them on the Day of Judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from Jahannam and to enter us into His bliss and mercy in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, I am only a man like you, to whom has been revealed that your God is one. So whoever would hope for the returning or the meeting with their Lord, let him do good deeds. Let him enjoin in what is good. And let him not enjoin partners in his worship with his Lord. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us steadfast and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to fight the temptations of this world and the deception of this world and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us sabr and goodness and uh, steadfastness upon his deen. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين استغفروا لنا وغفروا لنا بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين Brothers, if we can move forward, please, and uh, make room for the brothers coming in. Inshallah, move forward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث عج كمثل غيث عجب الكف كمثل غيث عجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, "Alamu, know that the life of this world is only play and amusement. Pomp and mutual boasting among you and rivalry in respect of wealth and children. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example of this world. It's the likeness of vegetation after the rain. It grows and it blooms. And it is pleasing to the person who grew this crop. Afterwards it dries up and you see it turning yellow and dying. And then it becomes like straw. But in the hereafter there is a severe torment for the disbelievers and evildoers and there is forgiveness from Allah and His good pleasure for the believers whereas the life of this world is only a deceiving enjoyment. Now. The words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to describe life, our dunya here, la'iba, sports, games. It's a sport and a game. And we're going to explain it a little bit, inshallah. Lahwa, a distraction. Lahwa is something you use to pass the time. There's no point to it. Zinatun, zina, it is a beautification or a decoration. Tafakhur, boasting. Takathur fil amwali wal awlad. Competition in gaining the most wealth in children. Wa mata'u al ghurur. The word mata' means anything useful, something we can use it. And ghurur means that by which someone is deceived. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing dunya as something useful, but it is deceitful. And it is you know, something that we don't completely find the use in. This is what it means in. It can be used to achieve the best. Allah's pleasure and abode in Jannah. But it's very deceptive in and of itself. When we play games, when we play games or sports of any kind, we become distracted. When we're playing soccer, we forget about what time it is. We forget how thirsty we are. We even go as so far to play until we collapse. This game that we're playing outside distracted us from something that's even more important. And in that scenario, it is drinking water. When our young boys are in their bedrooms playing video games, and we tell them, come to salah, it's time to pray, what do they say? Not yet, I'm not done. Five more minutes, Baba. Five more minutes, Mama. That game they're playing is distracting them from something that's even more important. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing Hayat al-Dunya for us. It's a distraction. There's something more important for us to be worrying about, but we're just fixated on 
the game. We're fixated upon the rat race. We're fixated upon making our homes beautiful and making our clothes beautiful and getting the best job and redoing our resumes every couple of months to make it good. But where are we being distracted from? We postpone Hajj for our distractions for many years. And then we get old and we say, oh, I'm too old to go for Hajj. I'm too weak to go to Hajj. I do not have a son to take me to Hajj. Or I do not have, I'm a woman and I don't have a husband or a, a mahram to take me to Hajj. But we went all through all that time playing with our distractions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares our life to vegetation or herbage that grows on the earth. When you have a garden and you see it growing, it pleases you. Right? You put in the work, you got your hands dirty, you put the seeds in the soil, you made sure it got water, you made sure it got light, and you have their garden growing, and you become happy. But what happens when September, October, November roll around? The vegetation dies. It's no longer green. This is just like our life. We put the seeds in, we make it grow, we make it beautiful, and at the end of the day, we're left with nothing. Nothing but decay. Nothing but old age. Nothing but disease. As we get older, we get diseases. As we get older, our spine doesn't stand straight anymore. As we get older, maybe we lose wealth. Maybe we lose family members. So, the best idea is to plant our seeds in Jannah. And this... This tells us a lesson as well as uh, Ramadan did. That everything is temporary. We fasted from sunrise to sunset for 30 days. It was temporary. Gone in a blink of an eye. Two weeks since Eid. Many of us are missing our gatherings with the masjid. Many of us are missing the brotherhood that we once had. Many of us are missing the fullness of the masjid. That is in reality life. It is temporary. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness and submission to his deen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim fil alim inna nikum hindu mujid. Allahumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barak ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim fil alim inna nikum hindu mujid. Allahumma gfir al-Muslimin wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minin wal-Mu'minat al-Ahyai minhum al-Amwat إنك سميع مجيب الدعوات اللهم أنصر الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين أعداءك وأعداء الدين يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك إن الله والملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واتقوه يجعل لكم مخرجا وأقيم